as we're looking at some of the highly qualified techs here at Terrebonne General Medical Center, not only techs but nurses and people that just make this whole thing work, we're now looking behind me inside of one of the cath labs here at Terrebonne General Medical Center as Dr. Craig Walker of the Cardiovascular Institute of the South, and I'm going to move out the picture now so you can get a look at him, is performing uh, one of those procedures that has become world-renowned. He is via satellite right now being piped into the Cardiovascular Convention, which of course CIS is the founder of, that is taking place in New Orleans. And they are doing live procedures that many doctors from around the world can look at and see exactly how the procedure is performed. We caught up with Dr. Walker when he came out of the operating room, and here's what he had to say about this particular case and also about how these satellite uh, operations are helping to educate doctors from all over the world. Craig, I'm, I'm quite amazed at the progress you have made on this convention and doing this. You were going back and forth mm -hmm. to different cities and different areas, but it's amazing how much this has grown, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, now we've moved it out of hurricane season. I guess technically we're in hurricane season. Let's hope we don't get one with the oil, oil spill. Season. But uh, we've moved out of hurricane season. That's a lot better for us. Uh, we have great attendance in New Orleans at the conference. This is the biggest peripheral vascular conference in the whole country, as we talked in the past. It's grown. This year we have actually live cases that came in from six sites, including uh, sites in Germany, sites all over the United States. Uh, the conference is well attended, a lot of enthusiasm there, and certainly we always show more live cases from home than any other place in the world. Though. It was such a realistic case, I could hear, so, so you humanized it. Is that what you're trying to do when, you, when you're showing these abroad? Well, certainly peripheral vascular disease is a human disease. People are getting their legs cut off uh, throughout the United States that simply don't need to. Uh, we have um, developed what has become the biggest peripheral vascular practice anywhere in the whole world. And people have come here from every United States state, from other countries, to save their limbs. And uh, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. People think they have to stay home to get treatment. But the truth is, an airplane ticket from the West Coast to New Orleans is about $300. And they can save about 50000 if they save their leg. So from an economic sense, it makes, it makes sense. But much more important than that, even if we take that out of the picture, just from the humanistic aspect, what does it mean? When one loses their leg, they lose mobility and they often lose their life. Life expectancy clearly shortens, it's a big problem. So we clearly have to teach people how to do the limb salvage work. But on the other end of the spectrum, we're trying to create a link to make people understand if someone leg, leg hurts when they walk, it's more than just their leg. They better think about their heart, they better think about their carotids, because if you've got a leg blockage, you're more likely to die of a heart attack than someone who's already had a heart attack and survived it. If you've got a leg blockage, even if you're asymptomatic, you have a worse five-year chance of living than a person with breast cancer. You have a worse five-year chance of living than somebody with Hodgkin's disease. And yet, this disease is ignored by and large. Simply checking the pulses in people's feet can tell us if they've got peripheral disease or not. And if they do, it tells us what can be done. And we're trying to get that message out worldwide. So what you're really doing, I mean, it, each year is continuing education for everybody. That's right. And in conjunction with that, we're also showing new techniques. Many of those techniques that are used to treat peripheral disease really started here. And so we're, we're trying to teach people around the world how to utilize these techniques in their practices and end up with better outcomes for their patients. How'd you make that look so easy? That was a tough procedure, but you seemed to, you were very persistent is the word, right? <laughs> well, I didn't think that looked so easy, frankly, but uh, it was a tough case. I mean, this, is a, this is a little lady who was going to lose her leg. She's mm -hmm. been told at several places she had to lose her leg. That's all that could be done. And she'll end up walking out of the hospital tomorrow. Not, not a week from now, but tomorrow. And uh, that's a big deal. I mean, it, it certainly is a big deal. And I think... Um, I think it, it's uh, what we would like to see happen all over the world. Now, when we put on a conference like this, we certainly teach a lot. But you know what else we do? We learn a lot. Yeah. Because uh, there are a lot of smart people around the world. A lot of them have ideas. 
If one can keep incorporating those ideas, everyone wins. How did you stay so calm in there? You, you look like you, you're very calm in there when you're doing that. You use yeah. a practice? No, I think that's a karate man effect, a bruise on the inside. You've heard that before. I think I take my stress out on the inside, not the outside. But it, it, it is stressful when you get in and, and wires don't easily cross. I mean, understand in the heart, uh, when we deal with lesions, usually we're dealing with a partial blockage that's this long. In the leg, when we're dealing with this, we're dealing with a total blockage at maybe this long. Mm -hmm. And so these are tough cases, and you have to be able to feel your way through. Uh, but there are a lot of little tips and tricks to make it work. Uh, you made it look easy to me. Uh, How the convention mm -hmm. has really grown over the years. Talk about that a little bit. It has grown. I think there's a huge interest worldwide in what we're speaking about. We have the inventors of most of the technologies and techniques there speaking. And so people are coming from all over the world for that. Uh, a lot of people want to come to these labs. They want to see w what the techs and what the people in HOMA are doing because this is widely acclaimed around the world as one of the great cath labs in the world. One of the, you know, it's three labs, but I mean the personnel here, and it's much more than equipment. It's about, certainly you need good equipment, but you need people with a knowledge base and a skill set and that's what they have here and a lot of experience. I'm amazed to see how many people it takes and, and the technology is just unbelievable. You call them no. for things in there and they're bringing it up and it really is amazing to see. I think there's one mindset. What's happened is we have managed to keep a team together and work together long enough that we understand what each other's thinking. Mm -hmm. And so when I fumble for words, they don't fumble for devices. They know what's, uh, what to get. They understand what I'm thinking sometimes, not what I'm saying. And it makes all the difference in the world. And that's what improves outcomes. Well, there you see it. We're at Terrebonne General Medical Center with the CIS team inside performing one of those procedures that really you have to see to believe. You have to be on site to understand the technicalities of what is going on. We'll be right back after a short break with more on Bayou Time.